Today on Wi-Fi Now TV, one of my favorite startups in the Wi-Fi space, the company is called Ragapa, and they're monetizing Wi-Fi with in-browser injection technology. My guest today is CEO and co-founder of Ragapa, Gagadeep Singh. I'm Klaus Hetting, and this is Wi-Fi Now TV. Join us right after this short message. All right, welcome back, everybody. We're going to get to uh, Gagandeep and Ragapa, uh, the technology startup in the Wi-Fi space, in just a second. Just want to remind you that we're taking Wi-Fi now, the conference to Washington, D.C., this coming April 19th and 21st. Ragapa, by the way, will be there. Uh, it will be the most comprehensive update on all things Wi-Fi this year, at the very least, anywhere in the world and of course you'll get a chance to network with all the great folks from across the industry now you can check out our program at wi-fi now events.com slash usa and if you have any questions drop me a line at klaus at wi-fi now events.com don't forget to mark your calendars the dates are april 19th to 21st and it's all happening in washington dc all right now, that was my personal plug for today, and I'd like to welcome now my guest for this show. It's Gagandeep Singh. He's CEO and co-founder of Ragapa, and I think he's coming to us from the Ragapa offices in California. Gagandeep, welcome to Wi-Fi Now. Thank you, Klaus. Appreciate me having you here. Yeah, thanks. So you have been doing a lot of work on monetizing Wi-Fi. We're going to get, we're going to show some slides as well about, you know, the kinds of solutions you guys are doing. How did you get the idea for Ragapa in the first place? Yeah, I mean, that's a pretty interesting question. And I, you know, have a lot of interest telling that out. You know, we're the three uh, co-founders. And if people are wondering what is Ragapa, Ra is Ravinder, Ga is myself, Gagandeep, and Pa is Parvinder, the three co-founders. And it so happened that we were sitting in a cafe uh, back in the days before we hashed this idea. And you know, every time you wanted to connect to the Wi-Fi, you had to get a cup of coffee. You have to buy a cup of coffee and they'll give you like 15 minutes of free Wi-Fi. And we were like, wow, man, I mean, this, in this age and world where you know, everything is digitizing, you know, internet should be free, right? And, and so we thought, you know, why not come up with some cool idea where you know, you're basically engaging the user or monetizing that entire session and at the same time, the venue is making money, right? I mean, they're not forcing you to buy a cup of coffee, right? Uh, so that's where the whole, actually, the genesis of this whole idea started, right? And then we started working on different ways of monetization, which is basically advertising, engagement, and all that stuff. But that was the beginning of how we you know, got started, basically. It's a great story, but you know, the funny thing is, is so many, so many people, when I asked them where the idea started, they tell me, well, we were at this cafe. I'm not even kidding. It's <laughs> It's true. A lot of great ideas happen in cafes. You know? Exactly. I don't know why that is. The exact cafe. We were in Emeryville and Pete's Coffee, right? So, you know, oh. it's not clear in my mind, right? There you go. But let's get uh, into a little bit more detail on, uh, on the various monetization strategies that you actually support through your technology. So we're talking about advertising, analytics, uh, advertising and sponsorships, actually, and consumer engagement, right? Mm -hmm. uh, can you tell us a little bit about how you do this in, in, in more detail and the technology behind it? Absolutely, absolutely. So basically the whole point was, you know, we understand that there is no silver bullet, you know, for monetization, right? I mean, it has to be a cumulative additive solutions that, you know, together work as some comprehensive solution where you can monetize, right? And, and you know, we started off with, you know, monetizing the session by advertising. And then we got into like, you know, engaging. And that's where we came up with cool ideas of, you know, those in-browser apps and, you know, app onboarding and all that stuff. So, you know, there are multiple ways to monetize the entire session of the user, right? I mean, be it, you know, through advertising, through uh, branding, through, you know, consumer engagement and, 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 and through analytics, right? I mean, it's another key where, you know, you collect all this information and it becomes a gold mine for the venue where they know what the user is doing while at their venue, right? So, so all these together, we're trying to come up with a more comprehensive solution through in-browser for now, and then obviously expanding as we move forward. Mm -hmm. And I think we've actually got uh, a slide to show this. And uh, if we can bring up the first slide, please. So this is the in-browser app example. Uh, um, so first of all, we're, we're talking about an, a, a start button so uh, people can launch the 
the in-browser app experience with the start button. And then when you're actually in the browser, you're not going to actually know. It's not very clear whether you're in, in an app or in a browser because it does have that super, super appy feel to it, right? Exactly, and, and that was the whole idea, right? I mean, we used to inject, you know, standard banners with advertising and some kind of interactive icons, and then came an idea, right? I mean, we're solving this problem of, uh, you know, app cluttering and app onboarding, right? I mean, that's the biggest problem with uh, the users, right? I mean, in fact, I was in a meeting yesterday with an amusement park, and they were saying that app adoption is only 5%, which is pretty bad, right? So. So we came up with this idea of why not give a user the whole app-like experience without having to actually download an actual app, right? And that's where this in-browser app experience came into being, right? Uh, what we're doing basically here is if you see in the different uh, you know, modes, right? And the first one is a persistent button which is fully customized for the venue, for the experience. As soon as the user walks into a venue, they connect to the Wi-Fi, this just stays there. You can be on any browser, any screen size, nothing's ever getting downloaded. You don't even have to look for an actual app, right? You're just basically, it's on the screen, you, it's on demand, you click on it, it opens into a full HTML5 app-like experience. There is tabs, there is drill down menus, and all this amazingly is done through data-driven through our you know, campaign manager. So from a venue perspective, you're not creating 10 different apps for iOS, for Android, and all that. All you're doing is creating a single app through our campaign manager, putting all the data together, and out comes this app that works across all platforms. Right, so very easy to Right. right. Plus, you don't have to worry about getting the app downloaded first, right? So you're taking away that one barrier, right? Yeah, yeah, completely. From the venue point of view, they're not promoting that app as much, right? I mean, as soon as you're in the browser, you know, it's there. So app onboarding and you know promotion is completely out of the window here, right? So. Uh huh. So, so that's the whole you know idea behind the in browser app. Sorry. No, I like this a lot, and and but also when we met and you showed me some of these things live at your offices and so on. What what actually confused me a little bit was. You, the, the experience in the browser is so app-like that aren't you concerned that people might be confused because they don't know if they're actually running an app or where they are on the device? I mean, you have some solution to that? So, so basically the whole idea is to make it as clearly possible as a, a, for the user to understand what is an actual content on the browser as opposed to what's being pushed by the user, I mean, by the, mm -hmm. by the venue, right? As long as you can do that, and that's why we say the customization of the buttons, making sure that, you know, we can clearly mark that this is the experience that you're going to get when you use the free Wi-Fi. You know, those are the things that we promote through our terms of service, through the in-browser app itself, right? And making sure the user understands that this is an overlay during the entire session, right? That they're getting in lieu of the free Wi-Fi, basically, right? Right, exactly. One of the other things that I really like that you showed me uh, back in your office was this idea of interactive icons which is also very much uh you know a, a sort of nearly like an apple design sort of thing that you can get and and makes it all look very friendly to the user essentially i think we've got a, another slide that we can pull up uh, with the interactive icons just explain to us what you're doing there you're basically putting in a, a a menu bar of of icons at the bottom there right so, so the, the whole idea clause here is uh, we have this mechanism of plumbing, right? We have the plumbing laid out where we are able to insert content. Now, what kind of content at what frequency and how does it appear is completely in user's control, right? And that's where our cloud-based campaign manager comes into play, where you're saying, hey, you know what? Log on to our campaign manager and you can do drag and drop simple stuff or you can be as complex as an in-browser app, right? So you can do all that stuff through the in-browser or to the campaign manager, right? I mean, like I said, you know, the plumbing is already laid out. We work across all platforms, all screen sizes, all browsers, almost 100% of the time. Now, what needs to go on top is exactly how, so this interactive icons that you're talking about is exactly one of those examples where you don't want an in-browser experience, but every now and then you want to push your own native apps, you want to push your social media links, you want to make sure a user leaves a picture or, a, you know, a survey or whatever, right? Through that, you know, in-browser uh, engagement, basically. Exactly, but so you're also going to need to, to work individually individually with every client because a lot of clients will not going to not really going to know what they 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 want essentially. Exactly. I mean, a few of them might, but that's a very good point, Klaus. And and that's what one of the reasons why we win most of the you know the customers that we win because we go that extra mile in helping them out, right? I mean, we have this entire support, uh, you know, in in house expertise in JavaScripting and all that stuff where we can build whatever they are exactly looking for, right? And help them promote this, right? And that's the extra mile in our support that we go out and, and win some customers, right? Basically. Well, I like this a lot. And I know you've been involved with uh, you know, many use cases, many um, 
venues and so forth, that even carriers out there. Are there a couple of cases that you'd like to highlight and share with us? And even some unnamed cases, perhaps you can share with us. Well, uh, <laughs> absolutely, right? So, I mean, um, I'll, I'll do the name cases, right? So the two that come to my mind, the marquee customers that we have is the Telecom Fiji, which is our recent win, basically. It's all across the Fiji island. They are providing free Wi-Fi. And when the users connect, they're able to push their notifications, their own you know, promotions and all that stuff. And then they went a mile ahead. And what they did was they actually bifurcated the entire network into different VLANs. And through us, they're able to do content insertion more uh, relative to each location now. So, so and then now what they're doing is they're selling that as a package to Burger King for that matter, right? So those are the kind of things they are using our solution for, not just pushing content, but hyper-targeted local content, more relative and more engaging for the customer. So, I mean, you know, that's the, that's the one I would, you know, really put it on top of the list. Super cool. Who would have guessed Telecom Fiji innovating like this? Right. I mean, that's amazing. And that's where we work with them to go that extra mile, right? I mean, to make right. them understand. And then, you know, obviously they had some requirements and we met all of that. So that's yeah. exactly the support that we provide, not just at sale time, but after sales, basically. And what kind of traction are you seeing in Europe, for example, or in, in, in India, maybe? Yeah, so as a matter of fact, the good point you brought up, in India, we're seeing pretty good traction. We're working with a couple of large ISPs there, and you'll hear some news probably in another two weeks from now. We'll make a public announcement of it. You got to um, you you, you tell me first. Okay, <laughs> I'll break the news to you first. How about that? Thank you. All right. Mm -hmm. and, and the other customer I quickly want to talk about is one of our early first customers in the hospitality. It's uh, Gloria Hotels. It's uh, 2,200 acres of, you know, hotels with four resorts, one of the largest in Europe. And then, you know, they use it amazingly well, right? I mean, they promote all the content. They push content on a weekly basis. I mean, the whole point, actually, not just the technology, it's also the content, right? So if you're up on the marks with the content, you'll always have some kind of engagement. And they've done exactly what we wanted them to do. So another successful well, well, see, this is the thing, and, and, and what I also just wanted to mention is that you kind of get, uh, get the whole story when you see it live, because I was actually honestly quite impressed by that, because I think it's a, it's a nice UI, it's, it, it's a good experience, you understand it intuitively, and you can do all these things. With it. So, uh, and by the way, you're going to be in Washington, D.C., and I'm counting on you to bring the demo, because at the, at the Wi-Fi Now conference, and Expo, you're going to showcase that, and, and, and people will love it, I'm sure. I mean, I can um, get it. I mean, a picture is a thousand words, right? I mean, the, you know, exactly. it, it's, it's amazing, right? I mean, then just talking about it, so. Absolutely, absolutely. And Gagandi, what are the next steps for Ragapa as a company? Are you looking for financing and all of that? Yeah, sure. So, I mean, we have a two-prong approach within Ragapa, right? I mean, there is this content side of things and there is this touch point side of things that's one part right where you're connecting on in browser right now but we want to you know future expand into digital signage we want to expand into apps we want to expand into you know wearables for that matter and then tapping into different content on one side of things right the other thing that we are really working hard on is a, a unified platform with all essential wi-fi services right we have the engagement monetization going on we're working very strongly on the wi-fi security aspect you know content filtering firewalling and all that stuff. And you'll see some products that'll be launched pretty soon. We just recently launched the Ragapa Pi, which is the smallest, you know, uh, form factor on a Raspberry Pi, you know, for small and medium businesses. And then on top of that analytics, you know, we're going to do something like, you know, through DNS, all the analytics for HTTP, HTTPS, and collect all that information and somehow connect these two pieces, right? The user touch points and the analytics and all the powerful things that we collect on this other unified platform and then basically push content to the user somehow wherever they are, right? Intelligently, basically monetizing it by providing the most relevant, engaging content that they can get in, you know? So that's right, and, and just, just explain to me quickly, how do you do at the authentication level? Or, or do you have um, that in place to, for people to log on? So and exactly, the captive portal is exactly what we're building right now. So it'll be a full on Wi-Fi services with, you know, turnkey, solution features where you say, hey, I want a captive portal. No, I already have a captive portal, so I'll turn it off. I have yeah. a security, I'll turn it off. So stuff like that, but all provided through, uh, again, and I would want to reemphasize or maybe emphasize that we are a completely software company. So everything that we deliver to date is all software delivered, right? So all VMs or even for the Raspberry Pi, it's a software you download and burn it on a micro SD card. So 
So complete focus on you know, a software, being high margin company, focusing on connecting touch points with all the data that we collect. So I mean, that's the future. That's exactly where we are right now. Gary, it's great to have you on the show. It's always a pleasure speaking to you. So much positive energy and passion behind it and, and, and super intelligent stuff going on there. I'm looking forward to seeing you in Washington, D.C. and bring all your friends and uh, hope to see you soon elsewhere as well. All right. Thanks for having me here, guys. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. The pleasure. Thank you. All right, everybody. That's it for this week's show. On the next show, we are going to be covering some of the great Wi-Fi companies exhibiting at the Mobile World Congress. I'm leaving for the Mobile World Congress on Monday next week. I'm going to be there for two days running around with 90,000 other people. It's a zoo, but we will cover it from a Wi-Fi point of view. And it's going to be a lot of fun. So don't miss that. And uh, that's it for the show this week. Thanks to my guest, Gagandeep Singh from Ragapa. See you all next week and have a great one, everybody. Take care, you guys. Thanks, bye. Wi-Fi Now is a production of RCR TV News. To suggest a show topic or to learn more about Wi-Fi Now events, you can reach Klaus Heading at klaus at headingconsulting.com. To find out more about Wi-Fi Now and all things wireless, visit rcrwireless.com.